Hi there, my name is Mason and I'm an instructor here at Pratt. Hope you're all doing well, staying healthy, resilient, and finding ways to get creative during these times. Today we have a really fun project for you. It's a simple cedar planter box. It's designed to be a skill builder with a circular saw. By the end of this project, you should feel super comfortable making grip cuts, cross cuts, and generally being safe. Let's get into it. Let's talk a little about the material you'll need for this project. It's important to use cedar, which has some natural weather resistant qualities. So it's the difference between this project lasting 10 years versus two years, even if it is a little more expensive. I designed this project to get all the pieces you'll need out of eight foot long boards. You're going to need one four x four post, three one by six decking boards, one one by four decking board, and one box of two inch decking screws. The tools you'll need are a pencil, a measuring tape, speed square, drill, circular saw, and a rip guide for your circular saw. A few other things that are helpful but not required are a scrap 2x4 and a pair of quick clamps. Before we dive into the project, let's take a real quick minute just to get oriented with a circular saw. Circular saws come in both corded and cordless version. I find that the cordless versions are plenty of power for most people. Most circular saws are also right-handed in that you hold it with your right hand with the handle next to the trigger and you can guide it with your left hand. Circular saws also have a spring-loaded blade guard. This is great as once you finish your cut and the blade is still running, you can set the saw safely down. As you can see from the teeth on the blade, the blade spins away from you, so this saw is meant to be pushed, not pulled. Circular saws also have a bed that you can adjust the height on. There's usually a toggle somewhere towards the back of the saw that you can lift and then adjust your bed height. This allows you to cut woods of different thicknesses safely. You can also adjust the angle of the bed on most circular saws. This allows you to cut bevels. One important safety tip, you always want to disconnect the power from your circular saw whenever you're monkeying with the blade. The first step is to cut the boards that make up the sides of our box to the right length. We do this with what's called a cross cut, in that we're cutting across the grain. It's the most common type of cut you'll make with a circular saw. I first measure the length to 36 inches. Then I strike the line with my speed square. It's important to adjust the depth of the saw blade so that the bottom of the teeth are just deeper than the wood. I then align the saw to the line and use my speed square as a guide to ensure I get a straight cut. Before starting the blade, I pull the saw back just slightly so the teeth aren't in contact with the wood. Then I start the blade and push smoothly forward. And there we go, a nice, clean, straight cross cut. Now one of the things you can do if you have small hands or you don't feel confident holding the speed square solid while you're making the cut is use those clamps I mentioned. Get your saw aligned to where you want it. Take your clamp, clamp it to your work surface. Let's talk about this 2x4 for just a sec. It actually serves two jobs. The first is that it protects my sweet workbench from getting cuts in it. The second and more important job it does is support my workpiece as I'm making my cuts. One of the dangers with a circular saw is that if you don't support both sides of your workpiece, gravity will pull either the off cut off mid cut, which can be dangerous, or even worse, it will fall into the blade causing kickback. So it's important that you support both sides of your, your workpiece as you're making your cut. We'll make a lot of cross cuts here, so it'll be good practice. Check out the cut list for more detailed information on the exact lengths. The other type of cut we make with a circular saw is what's called a rip cut. That's the kind of cut we use when we want to cut a board to a specific width rather than length. There are a lot of ways to keep rip cuts straight, but for this one we'll use our guide, so be sure to install it like I am here. 
You may want to practice a rip cut on a scrap just to get the feel of it before we start on the real thing. The only different technique with a rip cut is that you'll apply a little pressure inward so that you can feel the rip guide making a positive contact with the wood throughout the entire cut. Now we need to cut the slot out of the 4x4 to receive the sides. We'll need to adjust our rip guide so that we cut out 2 inches of material. Then we adjust our blade depth to the same. Spend some time dialing this in precisely as it's really important to get it right the first time. Be sure to secure the 4x4 to the work surface with clamps or have a friend hold it steady before making your cut. Once you complete your first cut, rotate the 4x4 90 degrees and start from the other end. Another important safety tip is that you never want to pull the saw backwards while it's running. So as you're repositioning your clamps, make sure you stop moving the saw, stop the blade, then move your saw backwards, reposition your clamp, and then go along your merry way. If you don't quite get the cut depth right the first time, just readjust and take another pass. Be sure to hold on to the off cut from this step. We'll need it later. The next step is to cut our legs to length. So in this case, I'm actually going to stack two 2x4s two up to support the workpiece and readjust my blade. Because a 4x4 is thicker than most circular saw blade cut capacities, we'll have to do it in two passes. Now it's time to put it all together. I start by pre-drilling all the screw holes to keep the wood from splitting. Alright, so we've got our box, it's just missing one thing, a bottom. So what we need to do now is make some cleats that will support the decking for the bottom. This is where we used that off cut from our long rip earlier. I'll readjust my blade height again and then cut four 5 inch strips and two 32 inch strips. We don't need to be super precise here, so it's a good time to practice cutting freehand. I then pre-drill and screw in the cleats. I angled them downwards towards the middle slightly. This will help any excess water drain away quickly. Okay, so now we've got our cleats installed. We just need to cut the two boards that'll make up the bottom. I've measured this already. It should be about 33 and a half inches. Well that about wraps it up for this one. I hope you all had fun. Pratt offers a lot of classes to help you get creative. In the wood studio, we've got classes in turning, 
general woodworking, and carving. We also offer classes in other mediums, like glass, stone, and metal. So we've got lots of options to help you explore your creativity. Check out our website for more.